What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to that thrifting series. Well, today is not really a thrifting thrifting series, but it is about getting things on the cheap. Or in this case, free. This is the much-anticipated best of dumpster diving episode. Now, I've had to cut a lot of the items I wanted to show you today, so I'll be sure to just squeeze them into other episodes. And I apologize in advance if I still sound... Bleh, but still got that chest cold, got a little bit worse, um, dealing with a lot of things going on in my throat, so that's going to be fun. Without further ado, let's show you some of the smalls. I've got some really big stuff, but I'm going to show you some of the smalls first. Jump cut! It's a purse! But it's not for me. It is actually going to be going to my mom. My girlfriend claimed on her own that she has more than enough purses, and to be fair, that's true because I, I dumpster dive a lot of them and so does her mom. But this one in particular, let's just go ahead and bring it in. If anyone knows purses, they know this name. It is a pretty good name in purses. And yes, I checked it out on the inside. It is legit. It even has the uh, translucent tag. I went ahead online and just went through all of the information to see if it's counterfeit or real. And this is real. And re originally retailed for about $200. Still goes for around that much. So, my mom's getting a really nice belated Christmas present. I think I got something else small, so jump cut. Hey, it's my laptop. It's actually the one I'm recording audio on right now, you can tell by the screen. And it's covered in cat hair thanks to that little guy. Yeah, I love him anyway. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad Edge E420, it's a few years old. I found this while dumpster diving. Admittedly, the previous owner did pull the hard drive and the RAM, which is a smart thing to do when throwing out computers. I will go ahead and say that. That way no one gets your data, destroy your hard drives, or save them to put into another computer. But yes, I found this while dumpster diving. I actually found it because the uh, CD tray door had busted off and it was on the ground. Otherwise, I wouldn't have checked the recycling bin that this was in, because it's a closed top in this area. But yeah, dug around, found it. I did replace the hard drive using one that I had previously gotten out of the trash. And the RAM is actually from a thrift store find. The same store that gave me a $400 microphone for five bucks sold me three RAM sticks, two gigabytes DDR3 for a laptop for a whopping $2 total. Don't you just love it when they don't know what they have? They actually hung that bag in the toy section. But yeah, did that. It also, the reason the previous owner threw it out, not because it was missing the hard drive, it was missing the hard drive because they threw it out, but apparently they had dropped it and broken the uh, power port right around here. And if you wanted to take it into the shop to get it repaired, $100. I bought the part for a dollar and <laughs> installed it myself. Of course, that required desoldering and resoldering the power port if I wanted to go the easier route, I could have gotten the power port and the power board as a modular component that just pops in and pops out. That would have been about $16. Still a lot less than getting it repaired at a shop. This is why you learn how to fix your own tech. I've got one more item on my list that can fit into this shot, and then I've got something very neat to show you that is also related to dumpster diving. Jump cut, I have a pretty little box. Though it sadly is missing the front latch here. And what is it in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Well, it's... Oh, sorry, cat. It's a nice little music box. Thanks, cat. Thanks. Don't damage it, please. It's a music box. It's a Thorin's... Uh, I can't remember the exact model number. Music box. Um, I think it's an AC37 or something. AC something or other. This is what I get for being a little slipshod getting this video together. But yeah, it comes with two music discs, interchangeable, of course. It's just a little number like that. Ta-da! Erg, can't do this through the viewfinder. Ah, there we go. Now, from what I can tell, based on the fact that there was a sticker on top that had a price on it, the previous owner paid about a hundred dollars for this box 
and I'm thinking they skipped out on their rent and just kind of disappeared. So all of their possessions were thrown away, and whomever was doing the cleanout does not know how to spot good items. I actually found a few never even removed from the package Pyrex items. So yeah, I found a lot of good stuff from this haul. And it still works. Let's just see if I can get a couple of wines on this. Sometimes it has a little bit of an issue with the disc pushing against this. I may need to tighten this down a little bit. Okay, it's going to keep going, apparently. I was hoping not to have that much going, but I'm going to talk over it. That way there's no copyright strike in case this is claimed. That way everything is pitch shifted, sort of. Pitch, there we go. It auto stops after that. But yeah, not bad for free. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. This model goes from $100, which, like I said, there was a sticker on top, to about $300, depending on the condition. This one is in moderate condition. I'd put it in about the 150 plus range, but I'm not selling it. This is too nice of a thing. I actually may go out and find a piece that fits that and do my own mini restoration. I don't want to do too much to it because I don't really have expertise restoring antiques. In fact, I'm mostly about bodging stuff together. Which reminds me, one more thing to show you. No! No damage. <laughs> the other thing I want to show you is going to help me show you the rest of this stuff. Because, like I said, I only really have this field of view. My old camera had a bit of a bigger one. Alright, cat. Onto the table, he was scratching at my bottom and meowing at me. He was sad. He was sad he wasn't in the shot. Um, my old camera had a much wider field of view, and to be honest, it was actually just a cell phone with a clip-on wide-angle lens, and while this camera is technically wide-angle, it is a smaller field of view, which is why I remembered I found these. These are the uh, lenses out of a rear projection television that I had found and was beyond repair. The bulb had burned out, which that's already a couple hundred for the bulb, and that's... Oh, in inside it was just kind of brutalized. I claimed whatever boards I could so that I can get the capacitors, resistors, and all of the other good components. And then I harvested the optics from the projector itself. Now, these little rigs right here, this is all pure dumpster dived stuff. I've got the lenses, obviously, but I also have the enclosures made out of an empty vitamin bottle. Uh, an empty vitamin bottle from me. I just been killed off some multivitamins. Man, I can't speak. Turns out the neck of the bottle was just slightly too narrow for the lens. So I cut it off, ground it flat, and cut a little slit in the neck of the bottle. Slid the lens in, put on the cap, and it holds very tightly. It's very nice. And the Velcro around the edges, well, that's what I'm going to be using. This is to protect the camera. This is to hold it on to the camera. The Velcro was also dumpster dived. I found a kind of, I want to say an industrial sized roll of the self-adhesive really strong stuff. So. That's good for there, and this holder is made out of the bottom of the vitamin bottle. I just cut it, ground out a little bit in the center, and made some little clips by cutting it in different areas. Once again, got a little Velcro. This is a really good wide angle. Let's just go ahead and get that in there. I got a few items off to the side, a notebook that needs to go away. Notice the very wide field of view. But a lot of... Ah, cat! Don't mark the camera with your face. Uh, I got a lot of what's called barrel distortion, the warping at the edges. Now, counter that with this guy. 
Oh, looky, looky, that's, yeah, that kind of explodes the edges. So it actually compensates for the barrel distortion on the other lens. And I've currently lost the use of my left arm because it is a pillow now. So let's just, there we go, put those together. What you have is an even wider angle with reduced barrel distortion. So I'm going to be attaching this to my camera using... Let's just set that down. This little harness right here. Yes, the rubber band is also dumpster dived. I found a bag of them on the night of the office supply acquisitions. I'll be using this to kind of just bungee strap the whole contraption to my camera because I'm feeling ghetto right now. And we'll be getting a much wider field of view. I mean, look at the difference here. You've got this little one, and then you could actually see the top of my bookshelf in the other one. So I'm going to jump cut into the part where I have the camera modified so I can show you the bigger items I have. Things that I never would have thrifted because they're always way too much. Jump cut. All right, looks like the wide angle lens is working. This is a 40 inch LCD 720p TV and it's heavy. I carried it about half a mile to my apartment and up a flight of stairs, but yeah, I got it, and it works. Now, when I first found it, it wouldn't turn on. Fortunately, my girlfriend's been paying attention and learning a few things about fixing electronics, because she's actually the one who opened it up and discovered that it had a few blown capacitors. Well, I replaced them. I ordered a pack of the right size capacitors, soldered them in place, and got this bad boy up and running. Now, if I wanted to get the power board that the blown capacitors were on, if I didn't know anything about repairing capacitors, that would have been about 60 bucks. The capacitors themselves were $3. Now, I was hoping to have something on the screen for this shot, but sadly, I need to get a universal remote in order to do that. The good news is I have a few from my dumpster diving. Bad news is I didn't realize that until just a few minutes ago, so I don't have one ready to go programmed. I'll get that taken care of in the near future when I finally go to use this screen in some room. Now let's see if I can get it out of frame without hurting myself again. Before the corruption, which you heard about in the update, I dropped this thing on my toe twice. And I dropped it on my toe once, this time around, getting it in the frame again. Let's see if I can avoid a fourth time. Jump cut to the next item. And this, my peepholes, is the most valuable item I have personally dumpster dived. Doesn't compare to the stuff my girlfriend's parents have dumpster dived, like Prada jackets and fur coats. And I do mean real silver fox fur. Not a fur fan myself, but that thing's worth about three grand. But yeah, this is a Nuova Simonelli, as you can see right there. Oscar. Oh, there goes Kitty Fur because he's in my lap and shedding up a storm because he's happy. He's a happy shedder. My other one's a happy drooler. <laughs> but, yeah, this is a, a Nuova Simonelli Oscar. It came with all, okay, almost all of the accessories as well as the manual. The previous owner just put it inside the enclosure where the dumpster is, not actually in the dumpster sitting in an office chair, and I'm gesticulating with my hands, as you can see in the background, and fur is flying everywhere. But they just set it on an office chair, I guess they didn't want it anymore. Well, actually, I know why they didn't want it, I'll tell you shortly, and yeah. I found this about two years ago. I haven't contracted the plague since, despite using it quite regularly, so there's that. This bad boy is a restaurant-grade espresso maker. And before anyone says, where's your knob? It fell off, actually. That, my friends, is a joystick toggle. This is actually a very pricey upgrade to the machine. It is not one offered by the company. Oh, and of course, I previously had this in a nice clean condition, but it sits on the counter in my kitchen and I forgot to wipe it off. But yeah, that upgrade, the part itself costs over $100. And... I haven't found a single DIY guide for installing it, so undoubtedly the person who gave this to the previous owner, because I'm going to say it was not originally bought by the previous owner, 
but they paid somebody to install it, probably to the tune of a couple hundred more dollars. Because this is a precision machine where even the smallest part is expensive. Now, it came with both the single shot and double shot porta filters, as well as the filter holders, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, it came with this. This is why I believe the previous owner threw it out. This tamper, the thing you press down the coffee with, is, by my estimation, from a Mr. Coffee. The previous owner decided, oh, you know what, I don't have the right tamper. I'm going to use the one from my little Mr. Coffee machine and go, eh, 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 eh. Notice the, uh, let's just get a better shot here. Notice the size difference. We've got a couple centimeters on, or not centimeters, millimeters on every side. No firm seal. If you use this, the fact that this is a bar pressure machine and not a steam pressure machine means you're going to have a very bad day. I can only imagine the mess that was made, mainly because there were a ton of grounds up in here and uh, still are from the last time I used it because I haven't cleaned it yet. <laughs> there were probably... Oh, I can only imagine the I Love Lucy levels of, oh my god, make it stop, going on when they ran this. So, yeah. Then they just threw it out. Even if this machine were to break down today, I would not throw it out. I would piece it out. Do you know why? It is worth about $1,200. Retail value is about 1200 bucks for this, and that's after it's depreciated. It used to be about two grand. Now, what I did after finding this, I bought a tamper. A cheap, little, perfectly sized, and convex, which that's actually quite a nice little feature. It gives you a better press, or at least some people think it does. Less than $20.00 for a tamper, I can now use with great precision this $1,200 espresso maker. Even better, I worked for about two years as a barista in college, so I actually know what I'm doing with this thing. And I just realized my wide-angle lens is catching the Windex. Let's, let's slosh the bottle a little bit. There we go. Forgot to take the Windex off after cleaning the table. Eh. Anyway. Like I said, this is by far my best and one of my favorite thrift, uh, dumpster diving, not thrifting, dumpster diving finds. Heck, it even tops my list of just anything I got on the cheap. So I think I'm going to leave it here for today. And by today, I mean like the fourth attempt at this video at this point. And I'm going to take the bad luck that came with it because my bad luck becomes good luck and my good luck already happened. You'll see it in the next thrifting video. Until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.